As a minimalist, I have shared a couple of videos about 10 things I don't buy anymore, and for this video today, I thought it'd be fun to turn it around and share 10 things I wish I hadn't bought. So things that I thought would make me happy, but didn't. Before we begin, I'd like to give a quick shout out and big thank you to everyone who already signed up for my new online course called In Love With Your Life, 20 Weeks to Simplify Your Life and Amplify Your Happiness. It fills me with incredible joy to see all these people already signing up and starting to simplify their life. So if you want more info about it, I will leave a link in the description. I am having really hot ginger tea and my cup is way too full as you can see, so I hope this will work out. I have 10 things that I wasted money on for this video and I really expect that most of you will recognize at least some of these and I want to share the lessons that I learned from it going forward and it's going to be a very real talk honest type of video because some of these things I bought after I went minimalist and you know no one is perfect everyone makes mistakes sometimes that's not an issue so let's just learn from them going forward here we go the first is expensive clothing from trendy brands when I was younger, uh, in my teens mostly and early 20s, I was pretty insecure about the things that I was wearing. And I would really often go shopping and I would always bring some new items home with me. And what mattered was not how they were produced or how they fit my personality or how they made me feel even. What mattered was are they in style right now because I wanted to be trendy and I wanted to fit in. As I'm sure many people are at that age, I was pretty insecure and I would often compare my looks to those of the popular girls around me and I would often feel like I didn't measure up. And one of the ways that I tried to deal with these feelings was going shopping and trying to copy what was considered stylish. And usually these items were pretty pricey. It was not like I was buying Gucci or Chanel or anything like that. But the items were kind of pricey considering the fact that I still was going to school and I was working a weekend job. And ironically, shopping never helped me to feel more confident at all. It only made me focus on other things that I didn't have yet or that my looks were not good enough. And I just felt like the same person with the same insecurities but in an expensive sweater or in expensive shoes. The moment that I started to feel more confident was actually the moment that I stopped shopping so much. And instead of looking at what other people look like, I started to get to know myself better. I started to tune in and see what I like and what I find important in clothing and what I feel good in and what fits my personality. And I am much more secure and confident now. And I realized that I don't need to have anything than I already have. So when we start to look inward and make our own decisions, that is the moment we stop caring so much about our appearance and what other people think of us. And that will help us so much more with confidence than shopping does. I am curious if you recognize this at all or if you have any items of your own that you regret spending money on. So leave that in the comments. Next is an expensive phone and the phone that I'm talking about is uh, the one that I got when it was recently released. It was the Samsung S6 Edge and I got it new at the time. I'm still using this phone to this day, three and a half years later. So right now it's fully paid off and it's actually really cheap. I have a SIM only, it's only about $8 a month. But when I got this phone, it was new and it was expensive. So how I got it is at the time, my boss told me that I could pick out a phone to use as a work phone and then they would pay for the monthly bills. And of course I got a little greedy and I chose the newest model. But what happened was right after that, I switched jobs and I was stuck with a two year contract on that phone that I had to start paying for myself. And paying so much money for that phone every month was just such a waste of money. And unfortunately, the way technology is nowadays, they make it so that it promotes quick replacement. Either they break pretty quickly or they change something like the charger that makes it not compatible anymore. And so a lot of these things end up in landfills. And what I try to do now is make my technology last for as long as I possibly can. And if there's anything I can do to fix or replace something, I will do that first and only buy something new if it really makes the most sense. And if I would buy a new phone now, I would always just go for the one that is one or two models older than the latest model, because for me, they do just as good of a job and they're much more affordable. Next up is souvenirs. Now we don't really travel that often or extensively, 
but sometimes we travel and we've been to some cool places like Iceland and Japan and whenever we used to go on vacation I would spend a lot of my time there looking for souvenirs and of course a lot of money and then the added stress of having to pack everything back into your suitcase somehow to bring back with you. And we wouldn't be buying souvenirs for ourselves only. I was also really on the lookout for souvenirs that I could buy as a gift to bring back with me and give to people. And if we couldn't find something that was really nice, I would get a little stressed and I would just basically just buy something random to give to people. But what I realized is that even if a trip means a lot to us, it doesn't necessarily mean that much to others. And getting some random thing from a country that they haven't been to will probably not mean that much to people. So now we only buy souvenirs if we happen to come across an item that's absolutely perfect in every way and that really fits our home or the person that we want to give it to and that is really worth it. But we don't go out looking anymore and that is a big difference and it made our trips much more enjoyable, stress-free and of course a lot cheaper. Next is wasting money on music festivals. Now I went through a phase where I thought that I should be able to enjoy going to music festivals in the summer uh, it's kind of like this social pressure that festivals have they represent freedom and youth and fun and I just thought that everyone should do them or you're just boring and looking back on it now I let that pressure get to me and I went now you may notice about me but I don't do large crowds that well and I cannot handle loud music and I do really enjoy music but I don't listen to dance music. And I do really enjoy going to a concert every now and then from a band that I am really a big fan of and that I absolutely love. But when I go to a music festival, there was usually only one band that I kind of liked. And I've even been to places where I didn't like any of the music, but it was just kind of the cool thing to do. And when you go to a concert, it is still very loud, of course, and very crowded but they only take a few hours and then afterwards I can just return to my own quiet space and I would have had a really good time, so that's okay. But festivals usually take an entire day and they would just drain the life out of me and I would feel so unhappy and out of place and really question why am I here? And I think this relates to a bigger issue of just being okay with who you are and accepting what you do and don't like. Music festivals are just not my thing and it doesn't mean that I am boring. And maybe around four or five years ago, I came to a place where I could just fully accept that and say with confidence that I don't like to go to these things. Next one is gonna be short and that is uncomfortable shoes. Now, I used to be someone who I thought enjoys wearing high heels and I would always buy these high heeled shoes that were either just very uncomfortable or downright painful or I even had some platform shoes that I felt I could break an ankle in if I stepped in them the wrong way and I would also order them online a lot of the time so most of them didn't really fit right either. Bottom line, if it is painful or just very uncomfortable, it's not worth it. I want to look good, but comfort is important as well. And now I just much prefer sneakers over high heels in terms of style as well. Next is a really low quality yoga mat. Now I am a big believer of when you take up a new hobby or you try something new, not investing too much money in it straight away and first seeing if you really like doing it. So when I decided to take up yoga, I bought a really crappy low quality yoga mat. And the problem was that I didn't do my research that well and it was actually quite expensive for how bad it was. And if I had spent only 10% more or 20% more, I would have had a decent beginner yoga mat and this one I've had to replace after only a few uses so that was just money down the drain so if you're going to take up a new hobby then it's great not to invest too much money until you are sure that this is something that you actually like but do your research because then you won't end up buying something really crappy Next on the list of things I wish I hadn't bought was high maintenance clothing. Now along with the uh, pricey, trendy items that I used to buy and all these high heeled shoes, <laughs> I also used to buy a lot of high maintenance clothing. And dry cleaning is not something that is done very much here in the Netherlands, it's also pretty expensive. But I would buy items that could not be washed in a washing machine or would just get 
very wrinkled very fast and I couldn't even enjoy wearing them because I was always afraid that something might stain them or they get stretched out things like that so I would hand wash these items which was a real hassle and then they would stay wet for days and days and days and I couldn't use the line dryer during that time because of course they had to line dry flat and it's just not worth it and now I buy clothing that I can just treat normally and actually enjoy wearing Next is extra furniture for storage space. So about a year after we moved into this apartment, uh, we were already living a minimalist lifestyle at the time. We thought it would be fun to have some extra storage space in our living room in the form of furniture. So we bought this square open cabinet that we just basically filled with random things. And about maybe a year, year and a half ago, I was just so tired of that thing that we ended up donating it again. Now the problem with storage space is that of course you don't want to have too little because then your home can get really cluttered. But if you have too much, then you automatically find a way to fill it up with more stuff. And I am just so much happier now that it's gone. I enjoy that empty space a lot more than the things that used to be in there. Next is non-cruelty-free beauty products. And this is one that I really regret buying. I talked about it before in a previous video, but basically I thought that they would be cruelty-free because these brands were producing the products in Europe. But what I didn't know was that they were still uh, testing them on animals for selling them in China. So I will leave that video down below for you if you want more info. But basically what I did was just switching over my entire cosmetics and beauty products regimen over to uh, companies that were really producing these products in a cruelty-free way. Because I just don't want to attribute to animal testing for cosmetics in any way if I can avoid it. And last thing that I regret buying is all kinds of different cocktail glasses, wine glasses and miscellaneous items. So when we moved in here, I wanted to have all the special glasses. So I want to have red wine, white wine glasses, champagne glasses. I wanted to have all kinds of different cocktail glasses, gin and tonic glasses, everything because I thought that we would be hosting cocktail parties or something really frequently and I would want to serve the drinks in the glass that fits the drink. After a couple of years, surprise, surprise, these glasses were hardly ever used. Uh, making cocktails is pretty time consuming. It's also quite expensive. We do do it occasionally for a couple of friends, but just not enough. And also we don't really drink wine or champagne ourselves. So these glasses were just sitting there taking up a lot of space. And I just thought after a while, you know, if I'm gonna have a cocktail, I'll just serve it in this uh, pretty tumbler. We have four of them, so it's enough and they taste exactly the same. So we ended up donating all these glasses. I think this one comes down to just not caring so much about what other people think of you and just doing your own thing. And I personally don't think it's that important to serve things in a correct glass. So I shouldn't care when people come over either. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up to support the channel and of course subscribe for weekly videos. If you're interested, check out my Simplify Your Life course, link in the description. And I wish you all a lovely day, a really good weekend, and I'll see you next week again. Bye bye!